Welcome to Sleepless Readings. Tonight we'll be reading a tale called Something Strange Happened on the Subway. Hey, a gruff voice said. Hey, kid. Someone poked my shoulder roughly. I opened my eyes. There was a man sitting next to me. Unkempt beard, rancid breath, and unwashed clothes. Homeless, probably. I don't have any change, I said. He wasn't the first homeless person I'd seen on the subway, but he was the first to sit so close to me. Probably high, I thought. I looked around the car. The man and I were the only ones inside. Not surprising, it was pretty late at night. The man chuckled. His teeth were brown. <laughs> I don't want change. Then what? I got a question, he said. Look, pal, I've had a long day, so I think I'll pass. You sure? He sounded like I'd just turned down the last donut in the box. I'm sure, I said. To make my point clearer, I put my earphones in. Not bothering to play any music, I leaned my head back and shut my eyes again. The train stopped at two more stations. I didn't open my eyes, but I didn't hear anyone get in the car, and I could still feel the homeless man sitting next to me. One more stop and I'd be home. Hey, the homeless man said. I ignored him. Hey, he said again. I sighed and pulled out one of my earphones. When I opened my eyes, I saw that he was still sitting next to me, but I almost jumped out of my skin when I saw two other people were in the car. A woman in her late thirties and a little girl with pigtails were sitting across from me. The woman, who I assumed was the girl's mother, was reading a magazine with bored disinterest. The little girl was sucking on a sucker, cherry flavored judging by the red smear around her mouth. Her blue eyes were fixed on me. I hadn't heard the two come into the car. Weird, I thought. Must have dozed off and missed it. Hey, the homeless man said, drawing my attention away from the little girl's eyes. What? I said. You want to hear my question? No, I said. Would you leave me be? Suit yourself? He shrugged. I scowled. The guy was really starting to annoy me. I made a show of putting my earphones back in and starting my music, just loud enough to drown the guy out. The little girl was still staring at me intently. We came to another stop. I started to drift off. Then about ten minutes later I felt someone shove my shoulder. My annoyance was brimming over into anger, and I sat up to tell the guy off. There were four more people in the train. I hadn't heard them get on the train either, but I'd had my music blasting pretty loud. Still, something didn't feel right. The little girl was still staring at me. Her cherry sucker and red smeared lips twitched slightly. Her blue eyes had a strange depth. It seemed if I stared too long, I might forget to breathe. It was a ridiculous thought. I knew this, and I scoffed at the idea. But there was a little voice in the back of my head, a worm of doubt. The homeless man waved his gloved hand in front of my face. I actually did jump and tore my eyes from the little girl. What? I snapped. Do you want to hear my question now? Fine, I said. What? What is your question? The man barred his rotten teeth in a grin and leaned in and said in a conspirator's whisper, Do you believe in monsters? Do I... what? I said. No, of course I don't. Are you high? The man chuckled. Ho oh, ho, a skeptic. His breath really was terrible. Look, I'm really not in the mood to talk, so... So you don't believe in monsters? The man cut me off. What about ghosts? Ghouls? Angels? Demons? God? He lowered his voice. The devil? Do you have a point? I asked. I wasn't about to talk about my spirituality, or lack thereof, to a hobo who was, in all probability, tripping angel dust. The thing about monsters, he said, ignoring me, is that they're nearly perfect hunters. I mean, ghosts are stuck to one place. Ghouls hunt alone. Monsters, though, they're like wolves. They have a hierarchy, they're organized. But do you know what makes them the most dangerous? Before I could answer, he continued. They hunt in packs. They set up traps. Their prey seldom know what's happening until it's too late. But they don't kill their prey straight off. <laughs> oh no, that'd be too easy. They toy with them first, get their scent. Monsters love the chase, see? Where are you going with this? I said. I wanted to sound angry, but the guy was starting to creep me out. 
I just want to ask you one more question, he said. He nodded to the rest of the train. How did these people get here? The train was packed. Every seat was taken. Men and women of all ages filled the space, and each one of them was staring at me. The little girl with the pigtails and the red smeared lips still had her blue eyes fixed on me. The sucker she held in her mouth made a cheek bulge on one side. The train was slowing down, arriving at my stop. How... The word left my lips in a breath. The train came to a stop and the doors slid open. I felt the need to run, to push through the staring strangers and sprint home. Instead, I stood and calmly made my way to the door. As I walked past the little girl with her pigtails and red smeared lips, she pulled out her sucker and smiled at me. The sucker was blue. I wanted to smile back, but instead pushed through to the exit. I stepped out into the night air and sighed in relief as I watched the doors to the train slide shut. I watched as the train slid away on the tracks, eventually swallowed by the darkness of the night. I turned and walked home. The whole way, I thought about the train ride. How did these people get on the train? Who was the homeless man? And the little girl? H had I imagined it? Or did her teeth seem a little too pointed? I was ready to shake it all off. I was ready for my bed. I took the elevator up to my floor and tiredly made my way down the hall to my apartment. Once the door was in sight, I noticed something strange. There was a piece of paper tacked to the wood of the door. A note scrawled in messy handwriting, with only three words written. Got your scent. Thank you for listening. That was Something Strange Happened on the Subway. Please consider subscribing for more. And as always, stay sleepless.